Okay guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about glands, buying glands, selling glands, if you get serious about what your expectations should be between buyer and seller. Um, I buy glands a variety of ways. Quite often a couple of my dealers or my, my people that gather glands, quantities of glands, I'm talking large quantities of glands, put them in jugs um, as they go, then freeze those jugs. And uh, a lot of times I get glands in, in uh, Ziploc bags, gallon sized Ziploc bags is another common way you'll get glands. So let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, when you get glands that a fur buyer or processor has gotten for you, be cautious that they're putting the, this jug will sit by their skinner and they're throwing glands in as they go. Um, and what you have to train them to do is every night put that jug in the freezer. Otherwise, and this isn't the case with, this, with these, uh, they've done a good job here. But what you're looking for is you got fresh granite glands here that I can grind up and do anything I want with them. Uh, and the fact is uh, if they leave it sitting day after day after day on their skinner until it gets full, that's probably a warm environment and the glands on the bottom will be starting to age and even sometimes rot, whereas the glands on the top will be fresh. So you'll end up with a mix that you don't particularly care for, especially if you're flipping the glands and reselling them as fresh. So always be cautious of that. The other thing to be cautious of, buyer or seller, doesn't matter. When you grind these glands down, a lot of guys will tell you this is a gallon because it's a full gallon jug. There's a lot of air space and a lot of fur and stuff in there. And it's the same when you buy mice in bulk. You have to be cautious of it. The honest way to do it is to go by weight. Because when I grind these down, it looks like a gallon jug of glands. It's going to grind down to about a half a gallon of glands. So what I need to do is weigh them knowing that a gallon is uh, eight pounds, depending on who you talk to, but the standard people I deal with is it's eight pounds. There's other guys that'll try to use the English weight. Don't do business, just don't even worry about that. Uh, so I need for a full gallon, eight pounds, and my, my sellers, and then when I resell them, unless I've really packed them into a quart container really, really tight, um, and I use quart containers when I resell them after they've been ground. That air space, that density is gone. I don't weigh those. I just pack them in quart containers. And why I use usually quart containers is they ride well uh, when you're shipping. And I can stack them in medium and, and large flat rate containers well. I'll talk about packaging frozen glands in another video and show you how I do it. So so I would say when I'm buying these, this isn't a full gallon. Uh, so then we're going to go ahead and as I'm buying them, if I've got 10 jugs or 20 jugs like this, I'm going to uh, write that weight down. Five and a half pounds. And then I'm going to write for that one, that weight down. And when, then at the end we'll take We'll aggregate all the weights, and we'll know that okay, uh, we got X amount of gallons. Uh, you know, you know, uh, some some of the stuff's pretty small. Um, the hardest glands to buy, you almost can't, is the guy that brings you the gland. And here's some cat glands. Is it going to be a full gallon? No, but I'll take these cat glands, bobcat glands, and then I'll I'll add. I've probably got five or six jugs of these, maybe more. I'd have to start digging them out. Um, and then I would uh, aggregate it all together, then I know how many glands I've got. So uh, anyhow, that's how we buy and sell glands. Um, and sometimes I'll grind them all down. I'll save some, you know, that people can grind themselves. But when I start grinding and dirtying up a grinder, then I will uh, grind down all my glands, age the ones that need to be aged, stop the ones that I'm going to stop fresh. It's kind of a mix with some of my recipes, and then if I have bulk, I'll sell them that way. I just sell them for higher prices that way. 
So that's the basics of coyote and bobcat gland or any gland, doesn't matter the animal, other than watch if we're dealing with raccoon glands, how much fat's on them you're not going to run into with the leaner cat coyote glands. Or if you're buying ranch mink glands, watch out for fat. Ranch fox glands too are the same way. So there's my uh, little tutorial on glands, buying and selling bulk. Um, I'll show some videos later on how to get glands off some of the animals. But that's, uh, this is when I get glands from a dealer uh, or a fur buyer, what I look for. Again, watch out for them leaving these uh, out. These are perfect. They're fresh. I've talked to these guys about it years ago. They're really good about throwing it in that freezer every single night. And if you're a trapper and you're, you're uh, holding glands, hoping to sell them, when you bring them to me, the first thing I'm going to look at is, uh, are they all fresh? Or are they half-aged, half-fresh? I will know if you've been leaving them out overnight on your skinning machine, night after night after night, and not putting them in the freezer. Throw them in the freezer, and you will have uh, better glands to resell, especially, especially glands like bobcat glands that have got a lot of resell value. Take good care of them. They're, they're uh, good property. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, and watch for more YouTube videos. I, I'm really new at this. Uh, so subscribe. I think you need to subscribe uh, for me to start uh, having my YouTube channel uh, take off. But we're going to keep it interesting for you guys. Uh, we trap 365 days a year in some way, shape, or form. A lot of it's nuisance wildlife right now due to the fur market being down. But uh, between trapping, uh, nuisance wildlife trapping, and uh, making uh, baits and lures, etc., I think I'm going to keep this interesting for you without having to get creative just to make you uh, YouTube content. As a matter of fact, I promise you, we won't get creative here uh, just to create YouTube hits, clicks, and, and content. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.